Good morning, guys. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Okay, so I think we have just started the radiation part uh, in your last class, but not solved problems on it. We should have a recap of the radiations and then go to the problems. Okay, so three laws which govern the radiations are the Wien's law, the Kitschow's law, and the uh, Stephen Boltzmann's law, out of all which the Stephen Boltzmann's law is very important. It says the emissive power of a black body, not necessarily a black body, any body, emissive power of any body is directly proportional to the fourth power of its absolute temperature. So uh, the emissive power of at which the emissivity is being expected from that, that particular body uh, is always equal or is always proportional the fourth power of the temperature at which it holds. So that is what your Stephen Boltzmann's law. From that we have derived, uh, not derived, in fact, we have came to know this particular expression. It says, Q is equals to F sigma A T1 to the power of 4 minus T2 to the power of 4, where T1 is a uh, temperature of one body, which is radiating uh, to uh, another body, which is the temperature T2, OK? Now, all this sigma, f, and a are nothing but the constants. Uh, when you remove the proportionality symbol, you will get this constant. So in that, we have known about what the sigma. Sigma is nothing but the Stephen Boltzmann's constant. We have even learned the value which is equal to 5.67 and 10 to the power of minus 8 watt per meter square, 10 to the power of 4. So this is the Stephen Boltzmann's constant. But what is F? So F is nothing but a, you can call it as a contact factor. Sometimes it is even called as an area factor. Sometimes it is called as a shape factor or a geometric factor. It has multiple names in multiple textbooks. So do not get confused uh, with all those names, all those things uh, which I've just taken. Shape factor, area factor, geometric factor. All this factor will just represent a factor which governs the shape and geometry of the body for the feasibility of the radiation heat transfer. So I can just remember these sentences. These factors, uh, suppose uh, for an example, in order to make you understand what this factor and how it would affect the radiation heat transfer, I'll just say this. Okay. Suppose there is a body like this. Okay. Okay, suppose there's a body like this. Okay, there's a circular body which is hotter in conditions. The body is uh, and it has a uh, temperature of T1, let us say. Okay. Suppose there is another body which is a flat plate which is of which is at the temperature T2. So I say uh, T1 is greater than T2. So this is the circular body, and this is a flat plate. So T1 is greater than T2. So according to you, uh, the radiation heat transfer occurs from T1 to T2 or T2 to T1. Yes, whether the heat gets transferred from the circular object to a flat plate or heat gets transferred from a flat plate to a circular object here. Yes. Guys, Faison, are you there? In Suraj, Nathan, Sagar. Yes, sir. Yes, man. So, whether the heat gets transferred from a circular object. 
to a flat plate or flat plate to a circular object when T1 is greater than T2. Sir, uh, can you say it again? If uh, T1 is greater than T2, yes, I will just zoom it out. Okay, now this is there is a circular object saga here. There is a circular object, okay, sir. and here it is a flat plate. Okay, and it holds the temperature of T1, and this particular thing holds the temperature of T2. But I say the T1 is greater than T2, that means this has a higher temperature when compared to this. Now, whether the heat okay. gets transferred from a circular object to a flat plate or from flat plate to a circular object, that is my question. Uh, so, uh, maybe from circular object to the flat uh, plate because flat uh, plate. circular okay. object radiates in uh, all directions. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Okay, any other answers? So, no matter what, sir, uh, the heat will always flow from high temperature to low temperature. So, no matter what, the heat will always flow from the higher temperature to the lower temperature without uh, considering the fact of its geometrical shape. Good answer. Any other answers? So according to you, Namita, what do you think? So as you said yesterday, it will always transfer. <clears throat> Sorry. Hmm. So one minute. transfers. If uh, the temperature is higher, it will uh, transfer to the lower. OK, fine. Yeah. So all your answers are correct. I can just immediately put forth all your answers in this way. So. This particular thing is at the higher temperature, which is at the T1, and T2 is at the lower temperature. So according to the rules of heat transfer, always the heat gets transferred from higher temperature region to a lower temperature region. That is true. But see, when I take whether this body, if, if you concentrate on this particular body here, whether it will radiate only in this direction to get heat transferred to the temperature T2, that is to the flat plate, whether it will radiate in only this direction, or it gets radiated all over the 360 degree of its uh, geometrical shape. All 360 degrees. So all the 360 degrees, it uh, radiates the heat energy in the form of infrared rays, is it? But your flat plate, which is situated here, is able to grasp is able to accumulate, is able to absorb only this much angle or this much surface area of its emitted radiation. Got my point? Yes, sir. Correct? So yes. then the shape factor will be around a C, if 50% something like that. So shape factor will be around 0.5 here because entire surface area is not helping in the radiation heat transfer but only this much area is helping in the heat transfer though so that arbitrarily i can put for that your um, the factor the geometric factor is only 0.5 here which is helping in the radiation got my point what is this factor all about yes sir i need answers from everyone got the point of this yes <laughs> yes sir okay so now I want you to answer this. Sir. Suppose there is a ball in ball arrangement, a sphere in a ball arrangement. Right? There is a temperature T1 of a spherical ball, which is just uh, put forth inside a balloon like this. So this is a balloon at temperature T2. Okay. And now I say that T1 is greater than T2. So T1 is a higher temperature when compared to T2. So radiation occurs from T1 to T2. Now I want you to guess what would be the shape factor for this particular case. Depends upon the diameter. Depends upon the diameter. OK. Any other answers? So the whole circle will emit. Will whole emit. surface area. Yes, Benon. Complete it. Yes, sir. The whole surface area completed. Yes, T1, the whole surface area of T1 will emit radiation. 
so the whole surface area of t1 will emit the radiation and whatever the emitted radiation is being able to absorb by the surface q2 so my question is what will be your value of the shape factor okay so here if it is of 50% so this was able to grasp about 50% so your shape factor value is around 0.5 so here it is able to grasp the whole thing that means whatever it has entered by the body t1 uh, is able to grasp by the body t2 so it would be 100% so i can take it as just one here okay yes correct so one is a shape factor got the meaning of this shape factors or geometrical factors and all this yes sir clear so i keep it as such a one let it be now okay so as the uh, electrical analogy have done for your conduction your convection and for your radiation here also there are some other factors where electrical energy can be made stating that if a current which is flowing is always equal to the potential difference divided by resistance according to our electrical principles same thing the heat which is flowing is always equal to the temperature difference divided by resistance so this whole factor can be treated as a resistance according to the radiation heat transfer okay so it is simple as that now uh, in the simple cases f would be equal to 1 for a black surface and f will be equal to the value of emissivity in case of a non black surface so what is this emissivity or emissivity so emissivity is nothing but it is emissive power of a body any body when you Uh, which you want to analyze for, and equal to the emissive power of a black body. Okay, so that is known as emissivity. Don't go in too much in depth about it. We will all discuss each and every parameter when you go for model number five. Okay, so as of now, just have a basic touch of the concepts, which should be helpful for you to solve the problems on this. That's more than enough. So emissivity is what? Emissivity is nothing but emissive power of a body which you want to analyze, and to the emissive power of the black body. Okay. Okay. So same thing I have written here. Let us look into your problem, guys. Now, so surface having an area of 1.5 meter square and maintained at 300 degrees celsius exchanges heat with the radiation with an another surface which is maintained at 40 degrees celsius i want everyone to just read the problem as i'm reading it the value of the factor due to the geometrical location and the emissivity is 0.5 so this is the factor which is taken as f here okay he has asked us to calculate what is heat lost by the radiation the value of the thermal resistance and the equivalent convection coefficient okay fine so i will uh, discuss this later on first this two we should discuss the heat lost by the radiation so we have to find out what is the value of q here and what is the value of thermal resistance you have to find the value of thermal resistance in case of the radiation heat transfer okay and the third one i will just explain you later okay Now, for the calculating K, you have this formula as it um, from the Stephen Boltzmann's lab. It says K is equal to F sigma A into T1 to the power of four and minus T2 to the power of four. So T1 value is given. Just convert into Kelvin. Do remember, guys, whatever value you substitute in case of radiation. I have seen many students making this own mistake every time. So substituting this in degree Celsius will always yield a wrong value. Okay, if there is a suppose uh, if there is a ratio like this, T1 by T2, if you substitute this in Celsius and this in Celsius, that doesn't uh, affect your answer. But if it is of such situation, you have to substitute it in the Kelvin. So always substitute. We need for written statement here. Always. Always substitute 
okay t in kelvin okay i have just written here make sure others uh, will take care of this in your examinations okay so yeah yeah he has given i guess yeah he has given there is that f value so f is 0.52 which is given here sigma you have to remember it it is i told you it is 5.67 into 10 to the power of minus 8 lakh per meter square kelvin to the power of 4 mischief mischief yes sir so can you just repeat the value of sigma for our revision 5.67 into 10 power minus 8 watt per meter square kelvin power 4 pattern chain yes sir the same thing sigma value once again 5.67 into 10 to the power of 8 watt per uh, meter square kelvin to the power of 4 that's great. So we know the value of sigma now and area it has given directly. It is surface having a surface area 1.5. So all the times when you solve the problems on this heat transfer, remember this thumb rule where um, it says you have to take a cross section area in case of a conduction. And always you have to take a surface area when it comes to a radiation. Keep this in mind. So while you are calculating the problems on the conduction, when you're dealing with the conduction, you always prefer a cross-section area over there. And uh, when you solve the problems on the radiation, you always prefer what? You prefer the surface area because the radiation gets emitted by the surface. So you always you have to take the surface area over there. Okay. So surface area has been given directly, which is 1.5 meters square. T1 is being given, which is at maintained. And T2 is the another surface for T. So convert into Kelvin as uh, converted here, okay. Just substitute the values, man, the same thing. LF's Q is to be 4343 Watt, okay. Next. The value of thermal resistance. So again, you can use the electrical analogy principle. So where it says Q is equals to temperature difference that is delta T, not delta T. You can write it as T1 minus T2 divided by the thermal resistance. Now here it is in the case of the radiation. Same thing, you need to find out this particular factor here. So if you have just calculated what this came in this step. For T1 and T2, you know the difference between the two temperatures. The substitute it, I'll get it as T2 choices per back, which is your thermal resistance in case of the radiation. This particular uh, thing is very important. The value of the equivalent convection coefficient, that means, see, all the problem which we have discussed up till now is for the radiation heat transfer. Now, for the same parameters, for the same uh, problem, if I treat it to be a convective heat transfer, then what is the change in the value of H would I get? That is the question. Okay, so you want to calculate <coughs> treating the same <coughs> sorry, treating the same thing to be a convective heat transfer and use the Newton's law of cooling over there, which says Q is equals to H into A into T1 minus T2, H A into delta T, which is H A into T1 minus T2. Treat it as a convective heat transfer and calculate the equivalent convection coefficient. Same thing. So here we have already calculated A you know and T1 and T2 you know. So just substitute it in the Newton's law cooling so that you can get the equivalent convection coefficient as 11.13 watt per meter square. So even you can use it in the thermal resistance formula uh, to get the value. So both the things you can do. So always prefer that this particular step. This is preferred. This is easy when compared to this. They can get the value of equivalent convection coefficient by using what? By using the Newton's law coding. So any doubts in this particular problem here? Any doubts? No, sir. Okay. 
So next, uh, I think yes. So these are very very interesting problems, guys. Uh, we'll literally enjoy these problems. Okay. So these are combined heat transfer mechanism problems. I mean to say, uh, in these type of problems, all the three heat transfers will be analyzed simultaneously. So it's very good. So just let us see one of the problem in that particular segment. The carbon steel plate thermal conductivity well level. So this is the car I have just drawn it arbitrarily here. So there is a carbon steel plate which has a thermal conductivity value of 45 watt per meter uh, degree Celsius. 600 cross 900 mm cross 25 mm is maintained at 310 degree Celsius. So the 600 cross 900 and it's uh, what the depth is 25. So the dimensions of the plate, I have just mentioned that. And this particular hot side is maintained at how much? It is maintained at 310 degree Celsius. Air at 15 degree Celsius blows over a hot plate. So this is the hot side of it, right? This is the hot side. So here, what happens? The air is blown at what? The air is blown at 15 degree Celsius. Okay, so that is a situation now. And uh, the convection heat transfer coefficient is 22 watt per meter square degree Celsius. So this is the convection heat transfer. So whatever the hot side can pull up the heat because of this air, the in interaction between these two, we have to use the value of H. So that H is given as 22. Uh, 250 watt is lost from the heat, uh, is lost from the plate surface by the radiation. So directly he has given from this particular hot side at 250 watt of uh, heat is being lost because of the radiation. So you will not calculate it. You have, it has reduced a certain amount of steps in the problem. Calculate the inside plate temperature. So this particular inside plate is there. You can observe, right? So you need to calculate what does this inside plate temperature by using all your learned concepts. And let's see the problem. What's the problem? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. So here, there is a convection heat transfer from the air to the hot plate. And even there is a radiation heat transfer emerging out of the hot plate. And out of all this, out of all this, you are kicking out some of the heat through conduction, sorry, convection. You are taking out some of the heat. You are taking out some of the heat to the radiation. But yet, there is a possibility of heat transfer from 3, 1 degree Celsius to an inside plate. Okay. Through the conduction. So all three are observed. One is convection, which is uh, heat taken out by the air. Number two is the radiation, which the value is already directly given there. And yet there is a conduction from three, one degree Celsius with this plate to this plate like this. Okay. So if at all, with respect to all this radiation, convection, conduction, heat transfer, what will be my PI? So that is the question here. Okay. So always heat conducted through a plate is equal to convection heat loss plus radiation heat loss, is it? So you are taking out heat from the convection like this through the uh, help of air. You are taking out heat from the radiation. Okay, so this would be equal to the conduction value. So conduction is, uh, I want everyone to respond now. Conduction is uh, governed by which law? Conduction is governed by which law? Yes. Sandesh. Sandesh. Shashank. So conduction is governed by which law? 
شہزاد عبد اللہ مائنس the con is equal to the convection heat transfer plus radiation now let us come to convection so convection is governed by which law convection is governed by which law suman suman He has asked me about the textbook, but he is not replying here. Mm, Jabal, Jabal. Yes, sir. So convection is governed by which law? نیوٹن So, convection is governed by Newton's law of cooling. Similarly, the radiation which I have just discussed is governed by which law? Where it says the emissive power of a body is equal, is proportional to the fourth power of its absolute temperature. So, what is that law? What is that law called as? Ethan Boltzmann. Stephen Boltzmann's law. Okay, so remember all this. The conduction is governed by Fourier law of heat transfer. The convection is governed by Newton's law of cooling, and the radiation is governed by the Stephen Boltzmann's law. So remember all this. So accordingly, I have written here what is Fourier's law, Newton's law, and the Stephen Boltzmann's law. Okay. The substitute means substitute everything, whichever is being given. I think the value of k is being given, so substitute the value of k. Area of C, which area I have to take in conduction? I have just uh, said this. Which area I have to take in conduction for the conduction? Whether you need to take the cross section area or you need to take the surface area. Which area for the conduction? Cross section and cross section area. <clears throat> so, the, for the conduction, you need to always take the cross section area, and for the radiation, you need to take the surface area. I just leave it as it is here. Okay. 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 Fine. Now, H is being given, uh, dt by dx, L is being given, which is the depth, you can just write it here. Ts is the surface temperature, hot surface temperature, and Ti is the inside temperature. This is the thing which you have to find out, keep this in mind. Okay. 
Now, H is being given, and A is uh, substituted as 0.54. Ts is given, and Tf is Tn. What is Tf? By the way, Ts is, is a hot surface temperature. I've just told you. What is Tf then? What is Tf in convection? Niharika. So what is Tf in convection? Project Rai. So what is Tf in convection? What do you mean by Tf? I told you in the convection heat transfer, what happens? Just try to analyze it. It's not so difficult. No? What happens in a convection? There will be a plate. Heat transfer functions. Heat transfer. So there will be a hot plate like this and there will be a flowing fluid. So Is heat transfer occurs from a flowing fluid to a hot plate or a hot plate to a flowing fluid. So Ts is nothing but is the surface temperature of this particular object. Then what is Tf? Transfer function. Yes. Uh, transfer function. Temperature. No, 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 no. So big can fluid what temperature. Simple one. It's the temperature of the fluid which is flowing. Okay, the heat transfer occurs between these two, is it? So Ts is surface temperature and Tf is a fluid point temperature. In this case, it is 15, which is being given. And this entire thing, he has given it directly as 250, which is given value. So 250 amount of heat, 250 watt of heat is being radiated outside, he has given, so you can directly take it as such. Now, since everything you have substituted in this particular expression, only GI is uh, left over. So use your mathematic principles to calculate the value of TI, which is around 313.86 degrees Celsius. Any doubt in this problem? Any doubt? No, sir. Clear, right? This is a simple problem. OK. Now, uh, there is one more problem. We shall discuss about this in the next class. OK. One to a couple of problems we shall solve. That's enough, I guess. Okay. Now, one second, so friends. Oh, sorry, Abdul Rahman. <laughs>